Or we're into the final 60 seconds. We just want to mention the launch, the ignition sequence. The ignition sequence is in three stages. From minus 17 seconds, seconds, the engines are tested automatically. Yeah, and at minus 15 seconds is uh, the first control ignition at about 20% of the total thrust. And then there's a second uh, minus seven seconds, uh, intermediate pressure check. There you see the arms falling away. That's, an, that's always an exciting thing for me to see the arms fall away. And then at minus three seconds, the order is given for the third and final phase, full throttle. The DDO is going to call out the final countdown. We'll be back after Soyuz has cleared the tower. Enjoy the liftoff, everybody. And we are underway. Soya is lifting off perfectly once again from French Guiana, beginning her 13th mission from the spaceport. Sylvain, what went through your mind as you watched uh, lift off? It's, it's very thrilling, as always. <laughs> it's a very nice, uh, very nice thing to see. Quite impressive. No matter how many times you see it, yeah, it's always the same thing. Yes. Beautiful. 300 tons at liftoff, <clears throat> roaring through the sky. That's less than half the mass of Ariane 5, you recall. Those of you familiar with the Ariane 5 launches, excuse me, saw Soyuz rise a lot more quickly. The boosters and the central core, or the second stage, are burning now. The boosters. Yeah, the boosters, they, they weigh um, 45 tons each at liftoff. Total mass is, uh, of the first stage is 178 tons. So the engines run on liquid oxygen and kerosene, as we said. Yeah. The same propellants which are used for each of the, the three lower stages. The second, or the core stage, is similar to the boosters. Its ignition occurred on the pad, as you saw. This stage will burn for about four minutes. We're coming up on separation of the boosters in just about 10 seconds. And then you'll see, remember, Soya is lifted off. The DDO is saying everything is nominal, normal on board. We're going to see separation of the boosters in just a minute on the simulation there. There it is, right, right on time. Now, remember, Soya's weighed 300 tons at liftoff after separation of the boosters. There's the onboard camera showing him falling away into the ocean. She's down now to ha how much? What does she weigh now Gabriel after the boosters? Uh, less than half its weight. Less than half, yeah. yeah I think it's 135 tons, roughly. Yeah, something like that, yes. <laughs> All right, Soya, as remembers, complementary, not a competitor, to Ariane 5. She's lifting two satellites, total payload weighing about a ton and a half uh, mm. this morning, while Ariane 5 can lift, of course, 10 tons. Uh, all, there, there's, there are many differences, though. The f boosters are the first stage. That's one of the differences. Yes, yes. <laughs> Coming up to the jettison of the fairing, that's in just under a minute. And you'll see Patrick Loir, head of Ariane Space uh, Facilities here in Kourou, giving us a thumbs up because all is going well with Soyuz. She uh, departed right on time. Soyuz you know, it uh, goes back to the first days of the space race. Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. She was, uh, she goes back to 1966, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, the workhorse of the Soviet program yeah. and continues working. Very well indeed. Yeah, it's very reliable, efficient, flexible. And cost effective. Also, yes, yeah. I believe, yeah. And uh, which makes uh, Soyuz good for any kind of mission. I think Soyuz has done every mission possible from telecoms, to Earth observation, yeah, right. Weather probes, weather probes, yeah, science probes, Mars missions. She yeah. takes 
people to the people, ISS, exactly, the space yes. station. Yeah. There's a fairing jettison you can see leaving exposed to the elements, the two satellites. Those are the black boxes on the end. Now, why can we, we can get rid of the fairing now because we don't need it anymore, right? Yeah, because now we are getting out of the, the dense layers of the atmosphere. So we are above 100 kilometers. Yeah, you see we are 124 kilometers at yeah. that moment. That's right. On the bottom, uh, Sylvan referring to on the bottom altitude left, on the bottom, on the bottom left, and on the bottom right are speeds. Are yeah. Good? And at this altitude, you have no, no, you have neither friction nor heating, so we discard any dead weight. In fact, uh, to to make uh, to maximize the launch uh, the launch capabilities. Does that help us go faster? Not necessarily. No. Well, you have less weight, so it's a bit more efficient. Yes, we do, we don't need any weight protection any longer, so we can remove it. All right, T tell us about our trajectory now. We're we're, we're flying north now, and we're going to go over the. Azores, I think. Yeah, the Pontintern will fly, yes, close to Azores, yes, yeah. going to over Europe. And then we turn east, that's right, and we go over yeah. Europe. And uh, then we will fly down over Russia and over it's Australia, I think. The yes, South the South Indian, Indian Ocean, Ocean, close to Australia, yes. You saw the second stage separated and the third stage ignited there. One particularity of the Soyuz vehicle is whereas with Ariane we separate the lower stage before igniting the upper stage, Soyuz is just the opposite. The third stage is ignited two seconds before separation of the second stage. Now the lower part of the third stage, called the skirt, is used to channel the flux of this third stage motor ignition down toward the stage below where it rebounds, which gives an added thrust assisting separation is that is that right that's correct yes and i think yeah. you saw the, the parts of the skirt being exactly being yeah. being blown away there. being blown away yes and during those um, 10 seconds in fact soyuz climbs four kilometers so from roughly 149 to 153 kilometers in those four seconds good yeah. giuliano gatti will be hearing from him a little later on telling us about the uh, low earth orbit uh, operations the first operations after separation Shortly, we will be picked up by one of our first ground uh, tracking stations, not on the ground, actually, but in the ocean. In the ocean, yes. This is uh, yeah, the first one to pick it up after the one from uh, Gallio, uh, the Gallio one here in Kourou. There is a station here on the hill behind us, and this, um, this station called SNA is, is, is a boat that's in the middle of the, of the Atlantic. Yes, in the Atlantic, yes. And that's only used for, for Soyuz. It's not used for Ariane or, or Vega because normally they don't fly. Yes, they don't fly in the, in the same way, yes. All right, the series of ground stations, which is your pursuit, follows the launcher all during its flight and picks up all the radar and telemetry. We'll be hearing more later. For now, we can go to a launch replay, the first of what we hope is going to be many replays, and you can relive those exciting moments just under seven minutes ago as uh, Soyuz first left the pad. Well, maybe not. We're supposed to have a, a replay, but uh, the, the the ground stations you, you can see them there. SNA is the boat. Azor Santa Maria station. Osagel is where close to Toulouse. Yeah. In French. So in by, France, yes. so at that point, uh, Soyuz is already heading east. Yes. Over Europe. So so she flies from Gallio over the the boat, which is SNA, mm -hmm. north, and then makes and then north over the Azores. Yes. Correct. And then makes her trip starting to go east and the satellites will be separated the over north australia north you say yeah close to australia it's in the, over the indian ocean but uh, it will be the last station to to follow it is uh, for the launcher is from perth in australia right okay and that station's used in a lot of um a lot of tracking for a lot of uh, yes these kind of stations are used for many missions yeah. Yeah. they're yeah. tracking stations for this purpose yeah, so it's an international uh, cooperation because these stations work for NASA, they work for Ariane Space. Well, in, yeah. well in, in this case, we are talking about a station which is tracking uh, uh, Soyuz, for sure. Then when we, we talk about the, the launch and early uh, orbit phases, what uh, they will be doing from Toulouse this time, um, in fact, they use a network of stations which are, in fact, uh, located uh, around the world, and they will use then other stations to to track those satellites. So, so, so we can say that it's an international cooperation effort. Uh, ah, yes, for this kind of uh, programs, you are constantly using uh, worldwide networks, and uh, you effectively share this, uh, this, uh, this infrastructure for many missions. Okay, our altitude, 180 kilometers, our speed, over 6.2 kilometers per second. 
What is ESA's role in the uh, Galileo program? In Galileo, so ESA is, um, in fact, the architect of the system. To the make it simple. Which, which means? Well, we, we have designed the system, we right. are developing it, and we are deploying it right now. Right. So, and we are, in fact, in charge of uh, making it work. Yeah. In, okay. Simply. Yeah. So the origin of Galileo is with the European Space Agency. Well, ESA has played a big role. Uh, now we need also to um, to talk about the European Commission, who is in fact the program, uh, the program in charge of the program now. And they're here tonight. Yeah, okay. of course they're here very uh, and indeed, and they are in fact, uh, for instance, they are now uh, financing the whole program, and uh, they are of course the political uh, lead. Okay. There's, uh, there, there are three main bodies involved in Galileo. There's ESA, and there's, you said, the European Commission, and there is also uh, and an we should agency. talk about the, yes, the, the GSA, which is the, Euro, the European GNSS Agency. The European? GNSS, so for Global Navigation Satellite Service that's Agency. Right, global, yeah. That's right. Global, say that again, say that again, the, glo the, the Global Navi Navigation Satellite System yes, from Europe. Okay, here's your